welcome everyone today we will continue with the detailed analysis of the different game played by michael in the story virtually true by paul stewart let's go through the detail the first game that we came across is named wild west let's go through the text at first anyway back at home i launched myself off into the first of the games it was called wild west that's what i like about computers the more futuristic they get the better you can understand the past I wasn't standing in the converted loft, the power base, as dad calls it anymore. I was really there, striding down the dusty track to the center of town. There was a sheriff's badge pinned to my shirt. As I got in through the swing of swing doors of the saloon, Everyone went silent and cleared at me. I strode over to the bar. Sarsa Parila, I said. And a glass of fizzy, red stuff came sliding along the bar towards me. As I took a sheep, I heard a loud crash. I spun around. There, silhouetted in the doorway, was black-eyed Jed the fastest gun in the West. This town aren't big enough for the both of us. Shaved Dawson, he drawled and fingered his guns lately. Outside, just you and me. So here, Michael has been addressed as Sheriff Dawson in the world of game, the first game called Wild West. I can remember dreaming this was really cool. I finished my drink and slammed the glass down on the bar. Jade had already left the saloon. All eyes were on me again. I wondered what sort of score I was notching up. All at once, something strange happened. Up to that point, the game had been pretty much as I expected. But when the second sheriff appeared through the back door, shouting and waving his arms about. I realized that the game was more complicated. Don't go out, the second sheriff shouted. And who are you? I asked. He wasn't like the other characters in the saloon. For a start, he was about my age. And though he looked like a computer image, he somehow didn't move like one. There's no time to explain, he shouted. Just follow me. I did what I was told. We raced down a corridor and through a door. We ran past some men and out through another door. Come on, shouted the other sheriff. We went on through another door and another and ended up back in the saloon. No, screamed the second sheriff. Then he ran to the back of the saloon and dived through the window. By the time I climbed out after him, he was already sitting on a horse. Jump up, he cried. He kicked the horse and we sped off in a cloud of dust. Who are you? I asked again. But the second sheriff didn't answer. He had seen the pose of main on horseback speeding after us. Pose of main, pose of main means group of men. Keep your head down, he said. At that moment, the sound of a gunshot echoed round the air. The second sheriff groaned and slumped back against me. Ahead of me, in bright neon lights, came a message. Game over. So. This is what we had in the first game called Wild West. 
let us go understand the detail of this game so he started playing the first game named wild west the game was best on the olden times michael praises computers that with the advancing technology they can present the past in a better way he was playing the game wearing the helmet and glove he was standing in the loft which had been converted into a gaming area although michael was standing in the loft his mind was no longer there it was inside the computer game and so he felt that he was no longer present in the loft clear he was playing the game he felt that he was actually walking down the town the badge of sheriff was pinned onto his shirt michael describes the game wild west farther he entered a saloon to swinging doors as he wore a badge of sheriff all the people inside the saloon became silent and stared at him he walked up to the bar counter and ordered a salsa parilla drink what kind of drink is it it was a red colored fizzy drink served in a glass as he sipped it he heard a loud crash outside and turned around in the doorway of the bar a shape could be seen what was it it was black eyed jade who was the fastest shooter in the area i hope you could follow so who uh, what appeared black eyed jade black eyed jade addressed michael as sheriff dawson i mentioned it before also so here michael is referred as sheriff sheriff dawson and said that the town was not big enough for both of them he spoke slowly and moved his hand lightly over his gun he asked the sheriff to come out michael smiled and so did his character in the game sheriff dawson he was attracted to black eyed jade steiner so the black eyed jade what asked him to go out and meet him so he sheriff dawson got naturally attracted to him and followed him see in the details we will come across the same sheriff dawson finished drinking his glass of sarsa parilla and kept the glass on the counter with force black eye jade had gone out of the saloon in the meantime sheriff dawson was inside and all the people stared at him again michael thought of the score he would be making till that time michael found the game to be as he had thought it to be but suddenly it became tough when another sheriff entered the saloon from the back door shouting and waving his arm the second sheriff shouted and alerted sheriff dawson that means michael himself in the game in the world of game not to go out of the saloon sheriff dawson asked his name he was different from the other characters in the game so he did not appear like the other characters in the game how did he look like he was almost the age of sheriff dawson means that of michael and although he looked like a computer image his movements were not like that of a computer image the second sheriff shouted that they did not have time for details and ordered sheriff dawson to follow him sheriff dawson naturally followed him they ran down a corridor through a door crossed a group of men and ran out of another door the second sheriff shouted at dawson and asked him to come they ran through many doors and finally reached back into the saloon from where they had started upon realizing this the second sheriff screamed no and ran to the back of the saloon he jumped out of the window by the time she sheriff dawson jumped out the sheriff was seated on a horse and screamed at sheriff dawson to jump up onto the horse 
Just as Dawson sat, the sheriff kicked the horse and they sped away. So, it feels like as if he escaped, he cracked the game. But did he really do it? As they moved at a great speed, a lot of dust gathered in the air. Save the ocean again asked who he was. But, but the second sheriff did not reply. He hurried as he had seen a group of men on horses who were after them. He asked Dawson to bend his head to save himself from being shot by the men. Just then, a gunshot was heard and the second sheriff had been shot dead by the men. So towards the end, what apparently looked like as if Michael and Sheriff Dawson has cracked the first part of the game, but it did not appear until the last moment. So until uh, what happened towards the last moment, the second sheriff had been shot dead by the men. As the second sheriff cried in pain and fall fail onto Sheriff Dawson, the game ended and a message of game over in bright color appeared. So this is what we had in the first game called Wild West. Alright, let's go ahead. So naturally, we will before Michael went to the second part of the game, second game in fact, Dragon Quest. He removed his helmet, his gloves, his visor and he was looking at the school. Let's read the title of it. So as I slip of the visor, the empty desert disappeared and I found myself back in the power base. I took off the glove and headphones. I glanced at the score on the screen, 21,095. Then I noticed the printer had come on. I picked up the piece of paper from the tray. At the top was a picture of the second sheriff. This time though, he was wearing jeans and a sweat shirt. Printed over the button was a message. I'm stuck. Please help to retrieve me. Try Dragon Quest, Sebastian Zulz. Okay, so another message came to his tray of his printer, urging him to retrieve whom? Sebastian Zulz, who is struck. And in order to retrieve him, he was enjoined to try Dragon Quest. I wanted to go straight into the game, he had suggested. But it was already half an hour after lights out. So it's quite late at night. Next morning I was up and back on the computer and was soon walking through the massive studded doors of the dragon's castle lair. The aim of the game was simple. I had to rescue the fair princess Aurora from the wicked dragon and collect the wicked creature's treasure along the way. I had already got the lords by the time I reached the princess, who had been imprisoned at the top of a tall tower. She was a young woman with long golden plates. My hero, she squealed, take me away from all this. Behind me, I could hear the dragon roaring. Rescue me now, the princess said urgently. Never mind her, came a voice and a second knight appeared from the wardrobe. It's me who needs rescuing. I hope you can follow this part. So, it apparently it appeared to Michael that he had to rescue Princess Aurora. But in the meantime, what happened? A second knight appeared from the wardrobe and he urged Michael to rescue him because it was he who needed rescuing help. Let's go ahead. Sebastian, I said. The second knight nodded. Quick, he said, while there's still time. And with a pair of scissors, he chopped off the princess two long plates. Then he tied them together, fixed one end, 
around the bed post and through the other end of the window. Now he screamed as he left for the window and down the hair rope. At that moment, the dragon appeared. I gasped and left too. As I lowered myself down, I felt the dragon's fiery breath. Across the moonlit battlement, we ran down a spiral staircase and through a secret passage on the other side of a tapestry. And the whole time, I could hear and feel an immense male, the evil dragon, following in close pursuit. The dungeon, Sir Sebastian cried out. They are our only hope. We went down the cold stone steps, shoes drawn. Suddenly, the dragon appeared at the end of the corridor. Before we even had time to turn around, the dragon was up, was upon us. I swung my sword, but it was no good. The dragon was only interested in Sebastian and there was nothing I could do to prevent it getting him. So this is what we had in the second game called Dragon Quest. Let us try to understand the details of this game. So before he launched himself into the second game, Michael removed the helmet and the desert scene of the game vanished. He was standing in the loft which had been converted into a power base. He removed the headphones and gloves also. He had made a score of 21,095 points. He saw that the printer had turned on. He picked up the piece of paper from the tree of the printer. On the top of the printer paper, there was an image of the second sheriff. He was dressed differently differently from what he saw in the game Wild West. He wore jeans and a sweatshirt. At the bottom was a message from Michael. The second sheriff wanted help. He said that he was stuck and sought help to be brought back. He suggested Michael to try another game called Dragon Quest. Okay, so now we will go straight into the detail of the second game called Dragon Quest. Let's go ahead. So Michael was eager to help him and Sebastian and so wanted to play Dragon Quest. When then but as he was already late by half an hour for bedtime he postponed it to the next day. Next day. The next morning, Michael started playing Dragon Quest. In the game, he walked through huge doors in the secret hiding place of the dragon's castles. In the game, Michael had to save the Princess Aurora from the evil dragon and collect the treasure on the way. Michael had a lot of time in hand when he reached the princess. She was kept in a prison at the top of a tall tower in the castle. Michael describes the princess. She was a young woman and had long golden colored hair which were plated. As the princess Aurora saw Michael, she screamed with happiness and described him as her hero. She requested him to, tell, to take her away from there. The road of the dragon could be hard as it approached. The princess was in a hurry and asked Michael to save her. Just then, a second knight appeared from the cupboard. He told Michael that he was the one who had asked for help and had to be rescued. Michael asked that, was he Sebastian? The knight nodded in approval and asked him to hurry. He took a pair of scissors, chopped up two of the prince's plates, tied them together, tied one end to the bed and threw the other end out of the window. He screamed, now 
and jumped out. It was an indication for Michael to jump out too. Just then, the dragon appeared. Michael caught his breath in astonishment and jumped out. As Michael jumped, he could feel the dragon's hot, fiery breath. As they ran on the battlement, the area was lit with moonlight. Then they ran down a carved staircase through a hidden passage, which was on the other side of a wall hanging. All this time, Michael could hear the dragon, feel and smell it also as it chased them. Sebastian cried that they must try hiding in the underground prison cell which was the last option to save themselves from the dragon. They walked towards the dungeon. The steps which led to it were made of stone and they were cold due to the cold weather. Suddenly, the dragon appeared at the end of the corridor. They did not have time to turn as the dragon had reached up to them. Michael tried to kill it with his sword, but it was a no use. The dragon wounded Sebastian and Michael was unable to save him. Again, the message of game over appeared on the screen. So let's go ahead. Let us go into the third game that is called jailbreak. Let's read ahead. This time the message in the printer said Better luck next time. Please don't give up Michael. Otherwise, I will have to stay in here forever. Try jailbreak. I think it might just work. Cheers, Seb. I didn't even bother to read the rules of jailbreak before going in. This happens with us also. Do we read the rules of the game before starting a game? We just launch ourselves into it. And while playing, in the course of playing, we learn the rules of the game. We always try to take shortcuts. So here Michael is no exception. So I knew that my task would be to rescue the boy. And sure enough, my sale mate was prisoner 02478 Sarge. I've got to get out of here, Sebastian said. Are you going to help? Of course, I said. Have you got a plan? Stupid question. With the help of a skeleton swipe card, we were soon out of the sail and racing down corridors. Sirens well, guard dogs howled, heavy boots came tramping behind us, steel barred doors slammed shut. We dodged, we dodged the guards, we flayed the dogs, we made it to a staircase and bounced upwards. On the roof, Sebastian looked down and glanced at his watch nervously. It should be here by now. What? I said. That, said Sebastian and pointed. A helicopter, I exclaimed. That was my idea, said Sebastian, excitedly. If only it would go a bit faster. At that moment, the door behind us burst open. Twelve guards with vicious dogs were standing there. The next instant, the dogs were hurtling towards us, all bare teeth and dripping jowls. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Sebastian take a step backwards. No! I screamed, but it was too late. The boy had slipped and was tumbling back through the air, down to the concrete below. So what exactly happened in the third game, jailbreak? Let's discuss the detail of the third game. So there was another message for Michael in the printer tray. Sebastian requested him not to stop trying, else he would remain stuck there forever. He suggested him to try res rescuing him to the next game, jailbreak. Michael was in a hurry and did not even read the rules of jailbreak before starting the game. All he knew was that he had to save the boy in the game. In jailbreak, his cellmate was prisoner number 02478, Sarge. Sebastian said to Michael, 
that he had to get out of the prison, Michael asked him if he had a plan to escape. Michael said, it was foolish of him to ask that as Sebastian had a plan to escape. He used a duplicate swipe card to open the door of the cell. They were out of the cell and ran across the corridor. As the prison authorities were alerted, sirens were heard, the dogs on guard cried and the sound of the boots of the guards running around could be heard. Okay. So the door, the prison door, in fact, made of steel shut loudly behind them. The boys avoided the guards, ran away from the dogs, reached the staircase and ran upwards. As they reached the roof, Sebastian looked around and then looked at his watch. He said that it should have been there by now. Michael asked him what should have been there by now, to which Sebastian replied, that and pointed at something. Michael saw a helicopter approaching. Sebastian told him that the helicopter was his plan for them to escape. He was excited as his plan was to materialize and he wanted the helicopter to reach them fast. Before the helicopter could reach, uh, before the helicopter reached them, the door behind them opened. There were 12 guards with violent dogs. The dogs attacked the boys. The dogs were ferocious as the teeth were visible and the saliva, and, and the saliva, sorry, was dripping down their lower jaws. Michael did not move his head, but from the corner of his eye, he saw Sebastian take a step backward. Michael screamed, no, as Sebastian was already standing on the edge. He was late, as Sebastian had already slipped. He was falling towards the concrete floor. The game ended, and once again, Michael failed to save Sebastian. Okay? So, that's the end of the third game. Let's see what we have after this. In the final part, we have another game. Michael has been urged to play another game, perhaps for the final turn, final time to rescue Sebastian from the prison or enslavement that he was forced into. So let's go ahead into the last part. So as I removed my visor, I looked into the printer tray. This time it was empty. I felt really bad. I had failed Sebastian, I had failed the game. It was only later when the scenes began to fade in my memory that it occurred to me that Sebastian Searles was the game. Sebastian Searles was the game. Strangely, although I went back to Wild West, Dragon Quest, and Jailbreak. After that, I never met up with Sebastian again. The same kind of Sebastian which he had met earlier. Then yesterday, I heard from Sebastian. In the printed tray was a sheet of paper. Can we have one last try? It said, I think the helicopter was the right idea. There's got to be some kind of an accident going to war zone. If this doesn't work, I won't bother you again. Cheers, Sebs. I couldn't tell which war zone we were in. It was a city somewhere. The tall buildings were windowless and riddled with holes. Mich machine gun fire wrecked the sky. Walls tumbled. Bombs exploded. All I knew was that Sebastian and I had to make it that helicopter in one piece. We, we ran across a uh, no man's land of rubble and smoke, dodging sniper fire at the far at the far end. We went through a door in a wall. The helicopter was on the ground, waiting for our arrival. We started to run, but the tank fire sent us scuttling back to the wall. 
Ajit Sebastian shouted to me and noted that a vehicle parked by the road. He jumped in, turned the ignition key and ripped the engine. Jump in! I climbed into the passenger seat and we wore off. A tank was hurtling after us. Suddenly, Sebastian slammed on the brakes and sent the jeep skidding into a spin. I leapt clear and jumped into the helicopter. The helicopter started to go upwards. I looked around. Sebastian wasn't there. Wait, I shouted at the pilot. I looked back. The jeep had stopped, but Sebastian hadn't got out. Come on, I yelled. But Sebastian was sitting as if his body had been turned to stone. The tank crashed into the jeep. Sebastian was thrown into the air. Round and round he tumbled, closer to the helicopter. He landed with a third just below the hatch. I pulled him up as he sat down beside me. The helicopter soared into the sky. I had done it. I had rescued Sebastian at last. Before I had a chance to say anything to him, though, the helicopter flew into thick cloud. It turned everything blinding white. I couldn't see a thing until game over flashed up. When I removed the visor, the screen was flashing a score of 4000000. Means 40,000. I think it's 40 million or 4 million. I'm not so good at number. So excuse me for that. I hit the jackpot. I finally cracked the game at last. That was what I thought then. Now I knew that Sebastian Searles, the boy from the game, really did exist. I had seen the proof in the newspaper. But how? I wondered as I cough of the train. Now let us go to the specification and analysis of the final game, Warzone. So Michael removed the helmet and looked at the printer tray for another message. There was none this time. He felt bad because he could not save Sebastian. After some time, when the scenes of the game began to fade from his memory, Michael thought that Sebastian Sulz was a part of the game. On the contrary, when Michael played the game Wild West, Dragon Quest, and Zelbreath again, the character of Sebastian was not there. The day before, there had been another message from Sebastian. He requested for a last try and asked Michael to play Warzone. He said that the idea of escaping in a helicopter which they had tried in jailbreak was a good one. But there had to be an accident also. Sebastian assured that this would be their last try and if it did not work, he would not disturb Michael in future. Michael started playing the game Warzone. They were in a unknown city. The tall buildings did not have windows. Their walls were full of holes due to gunshots. The sound of machine guns could be heard. The buildings failed as bomb exploded. Michael had only one thing in mind to help Sebastian reach the helicopter without getting injured. He ran across the land, which was war striking. There was rubble and smoke all around. As they ran, they escaped the gunshots fired by the hidden gunmen. They reached the wall and passed through a door in it. They saw the helicopter waiting for them. The boys ran, but a tank fired at them and they were ran and they, uh, they ran towards the wall for shelter. Sebastian spotted a jeep and told Michael that they could reach the helicopter by traveling in it. Sebastian jumped into the jeep, turned the ignition on, stepped on the accelerator and asked Michael to jump in. Michael sat on the passenger seat next to Sebastian and they hurried towards the helicopter. A tank was chasing them. Suddenly, Sebastian stepped on the brake 
and the jeep spun around. Michael jumped out safely and reached the helicopter finally. As the helicopter started moving upwards, Michael looked around. Sebastian was no, nowhere to be seen. Michael asked the pilot to stop the helicopter. He looked at the jeep. It had stopped, but Sebastian was still inside. Michael screamed at Sebastian to come out of the jeep, but he was motionless. The tank hit the jeep. Sebastian fell near the helicopter. He landed just below the door of the helicopter. Michael pulled him, and as they sat inside, the helicopter flew up in the sky. Michael rescued Sebastian. Before he could say anything, the helicopter disappeared into a dense cloud and came over flashed on the screen. Michael removed the helmet and saw that his score was, as he told you, that big number, I think it's 4 million points. He had hit a jackpot. At the time when Michael had played the computer game, he had thought that Sebastian was a part of the game. Now he is realizing this moment. And the mission was to save him. He had thought that by saving him, he had hit the jackpot. Later, when he read the newspaper article, he came to know that Sebastian was a real person. Still, as he got down the train, Michael could not figure out how the real Sebastian had been a part of the games. Okay, so this is where he got stuck. And this is what we had in the four games that he played. In the next part, we will go into the detailed analysis and try to understand how actually Sebastian entered into the world of game. Alright, I hope you enjoyed listening to the story. Thank you very much for your patience.